Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning, a vote to remove Congresswoman Liz Cheney from her Republican leadership spot in the House. I'm Alex Brashe in Washington, coming up the latest on the effort to replace her. And taking a look outside with live cam, after all that rain, we are in the lower 60s this morning. I am liking this weather. And it's breezy and cooler, too. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, May 12th. Thanks for joining us. It doesn't feel like May, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> I am too. We got some more needed rainfall around here last night. Quite a few folks saw storms and Mike goes straight joins us now with more on what could happen on our Wednesday morning. Mike. Good morning. Yeah, boy, it was coming down gangbusters. Mm -hmm. We had some severe storms around the area as well, and uh, everything is really, really calmed down right now. You know, it's funny. The normal low temperature, the average low is 65 degrees. We're not that far below that, but boy, it, it just doesn't feel like what we've been experiencing the past couple of weeks. Anyway, uh, right now there may be a few little damp spots left over on the roads. There's nothing showing up on radar other than, you know, a leftover little sprinkle here and there. So I've got a mention of a shower in the forecast primarily in the morning, but all of the rain has just moved on out of the picture. We got a few leftover showers well down there along the coastal plain. So take into account one or two of them, but uh, big rain is pretty much passed for the time being. As far as temperatures, 59 Bernie stage, Kerrville comfort, got a lot of relative humidity out there. Now, dew points have dropped down, but of course, we've got all the moisture in the ground. We've got uh, moisture in the air relative to the temperatures, uh, so it's kind of setting the stage, you would think, for some fog, but we've got a decent breeze out there this morning, so watch out for a patch of fog, but otherwise, the wind should really prevent a lot of that from forming up. Winds about 10, uh, 15 miles per hour, and then we do have some gusts up to 22, and it is going to be breezy today, and as far as mold, it is on the moderate side. It's temperatures really aren't going much of anywhere. We are going to be saying in the mid lower 60s, uh, upper 50s hill country. Again, a mention of a shower or two and then that's it. 68 degrees. I think we keep a lot of clouds around. If there's a peak of sunshine, great, but I just think it's going to be basically cloudy sky, so that's going to help to keep temperatures down and uh, kind of on the breezy side. Beautiful the next couple of days as far as temperatures are concerned. Well, more sunshine as well. Weekend forecast. Um, keep your umbrella handy. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you very much, Mike. Top story this morning. An overnight standoff continues on the city's south side where San Antonio police and the SWAT team have an armed man surrounded. It's happening off of Ada Street on South New Braunfels Avenue, east of I-37. Our Stephen Cavazos is live where that scene is unfolding. Stephen, do we know how all of this started? Well, Mark, this has been going on for almost five hours and San Antonio police and SWAT do have that man surrounded at a location behind us. I'm going to step out of the frame to show you what we're looking at this morning. We have San Antonio police, SWAT, EMS, and a very heavy police presence out here over where that bank is over onto this field right uh, next to it and into this HEB parking lot. Now, this all started when customers at this HEB told police that a man was walking around the parking lot with a gun, threatening to shoot himself. And a sergeant on the scene does tell us this all happened just before 11 last night. But of course, that negotiations have continued well into this morning. SWAT again and SAPD are negotiating with that man to drop the gun. Of course, we are still working to get more information. It's not clear why this started, but again, this is a very active scene. We are working to bring you the very latest information. So stay with us here on GMSA as we bring you the latest. Mark Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Stephen. Here's a look at where we stand right now with coronavirus cases here at home. 125 new cases were confirmed along with nine new deaths. That brings the total number of COVID-19 related deaths in Bear County to 3,400. In our hospitals, 210 COVID-19 patients are being treated. 68 are in the intensive care unit and 34 are on ventilators. Hours from now, House Republicans will vote to remove Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney from her spot as conference committee chair. She has consistently called out former President Donald Trump for falsely claiming the election was stolen and accuses him of inciting violence at the Capitol. ABC's Ox Brache has more from Washington. Ahead of today's vote that's all but certain to kick her out of Republican leadership, Congresswoman Liz Cheney stood in a half-empty House chamber Tuesday night, repeating the words that led to this moment. Today we face a threat America has never seen before. A former president who provoked a violent attack on this Capitol in an effort to steal the election. Cheney, the number three Republican in the House, not backing down. Remaining silent and ignoring the lie emboldens the liar. 
I will not sit back and watch in silence while others lead our party down a path that abandons the rule of law and joins the former president's crusade to undermine our democracy. The Wyoming Congresswoman won't be ousted over policy. She's voted with former President Trump more than 90% of the time. Instead, she faces replacement over continuing to call Trump out and had this warning. He risks inciting further violence. But other top Republicans say that's the wrong message. For us to win in 2022 and 2024, we need everybody. A letter sent by leader Kevin McCarthy urged members to kick Cheney out of leadership, saying it's clear we need to make a change. Do you support Elise Stefanik for that job? Yes, I do. GOP leadership has backed a Trump-endorsed replacement New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. Stefanik objected to certifying the presidential results, but her confirmation could be delayed by some who think she's not conservative enough. In a memo obtained by ABC News, House Freedom Caucus member Representative Chip Roy says we should either choose someone who reflects our conservative values or perhaps leave the position vacant. This morning, we expect Republicans to hold that secret ballot vote to remove Cheney from her leadership role, but we do not expect them to hold a second vote that would elevate Stefanik to replace her today. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Also in Washington today, two Trump administration officials are scheduled to testify before Congress about decisions they made during the Capitol riots. Their former acting Defense Secretary Christopher Miller and former acting Attorney General Jeffrey Rosen. They've released transcripts of what they plan to say to the House Oversight Committee. Notably, Miller emphasizes in his transcript that he stands by every decision he made that day. In Houston, a missing mom's SUV is found in a pond. Erica Hernandez, a mother of three, was last seen on April 18th. Now, more than three weeks later, divers found her vehicle in a pond with a body inside. Police say they will have to wait for the medical examiner to identify the body, but they say the license plate on the vehicle is linked to the woman's name. Police do say it's too early to speculate if there was foul play. It was the first spacecraft to enter interstellar space in 2012, and now eight years later, uh, Voyager 1's data is revealing new insights. According to a new study, the spacecraft detects a persistent hum beyond our solar system. Findings say the sound is plasma waves reverberating through space, changing in frequency based on surrounding density. Voyager 1 was built with special antennas to pick up these tones and transmit that information 14 billion miles back to Earth. The probe first launched in 1977. The sounds collected since 2012 reveal a new way to measure densities in interstellar space and helps to better map the space between stars. And time now is about 438 and 64 degrees right now. Memorial Day weekend coming up and AAA anticipates 3 million Texans will travel most by car. We'll tell you how much more that will cost you at the pump. Also next, a look ahead at tonight's game as the San Antonio Spurs take on the Brooklyn Nets. Game day and outside with live cam, it's cooler out there. We have some morning clouds hanging around. I'm wondering if we're going to see showers hang around too today. Mike can clear that up for us coming up. If you're not awake at 441 in the morning, that animation will do it. Our Spurs are in New York tonight for their final road trip over the regular season. Chapter came through with a statement victory of one of the beasts of the East in the Milwaukee Bucks. Final score 146 to 125 Monday night. Spurs now 33 and 35 on the season. Spurs take on the Nets in Brooklyn. Tip off set for 7 o'clock tonight at Barclays Center. And now a look at the San Antonio Missions. After three wins in a row against Corpus Christi, the missions are on the road this time in Midland, but they dropped their first game against the Rockhound 6-1. San Antonio will continue the series every night, including tonight through Sunday. Next home game, May 18th versus Frisco for a six-game series. All right, wishing them luck, and of course, go Spurs, go. <laughs> right now, 441 on your Wednesday morning. Still ahead, get ready to pay even more at the pump. We're going to take a look at what's what's fueling that surge, and it's not the recent pipeline cyber attack. And next, first look at why a major cruise line is threatening to skip some American ports after a controversial bill was signed into law. 
And welcome back. It's about 444 Norwegian Cruise Line threatening to skip Florida ports after the governor signed a law banning businesses from requiring customers to be vaccinated. ABC's Victor Okendo has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the cruise industry versus the state of Florida. Trouble brewing between cruise lines and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Norwegian Cruise Line threatening to pull its ships from the state's ports in places like Tampa, Miami and Key West if the governor doesn't allow them to mandate vaccines on board. Last week, DeSantis doubled down on his vaccine passport ban, signing it into law, blocking businesses or government entities from requiring them. Meanwhile, Norwegian, which is headquartered in Florida and other lines like Virgin, Royal Caribbean and Celebrity have all made one thing very clear, that all adult passengers and crew are required to be vaccinated before setting sail on their ships. And coming up at 7 a.m., an ABC News exclusive, Michael Strahan goes one-on-one -on -one with the CEO of Norwegian Cruise Line. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News, Miami Beach. Well, from cruising to sailing on down the road, more and more people are hitting the road as we get closer to summer. And as 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris reports, that means gas will soon be in greater demand and prices are already rising. Tyler Ashbaugh is planning his first road trip in more than a year, and he's pumped. I have plans to take my wife on her birthday down to the coast. Uh, we have an Airbnb down there. He can expect to share the road. For the Memorial Day weekend, AAA anticipates 3 million Texans will travel, most by car, a 60% rebound from last year's summer kickoff. We've got more people getting vaccinated. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of pent-up demand, and it just shows that Texans are ready to get back out and travel. Gas prices are accelerating too. The local average now two fifty nine a gallon. That's up twelve cents in just the past week, catching Grace Fletcher by surprise. But the price of gas, oh my, oh my, I hadn't looked. Oh, it's two sixty nine. Higher than you thought. Oh yes. Don't blame the ransomware attack on the Colonial Pipeline. Analysts at Gas Buddy tell us it will have zero impact on Texas supplies and should not affect prices here. What will continue to drive up our prices? Revved up demand. Right now, San Antonio drivers are paying the most they have in three years. A lot different from last year when we paid an average of one forty a gallon. Although Memorial Weekend travel is still expected to be a little less than before the pandemic, road tripping is back, and AAA says it's a strong indicator of the summer ahead. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. And time now is 4.47 and nice and chilly outside. It's 63 degrees, feels a little cooler out there. Where do we stand as far as the humidity, Mike? And uh, another round of showers or storms? Well, the air is, is pretty dry out there. Now, mm -hmm. relative to the temperature, and that's why I was talking about relative humidity, it's 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 high out there, um, but it, it is comfortable. It's nice. You're, you may want a light jacket th even throughout the rest of the afternoon because we're only going to be in the upper 60s, lots of clouds and, and kind of breezy. Boy, I tell you one thing, this just says it all. It was coming down in buckets last night in some areas. Lackland area, yeah, I mean, look at all the water just kind of standing and running through the, the lawn over there. Uh, we've been getting a bunch and we're going to be getting more rain down the roads. Hope at least we get a little bit of a chance to uh, dry out and you may get a quick opportunity to cut your lawn if it's going to be just soaking up all this rain in the next couple of days. Right now out there by the airport, you can see a little sheen on the road, maybe uh, some leftover dampness, but we haven't had any rain for a while. 63 in town, 61 in Balverde, upper 50s in the hill country. And here is now these numbers. They are about uh, 60, a little bit below that. Obviously, nice and comfortable, a lot better than a couple of days ago. However, relative to the temperature, these numbers are very high, so relative humidities are high. And in this situation with all the moisture in the ground and in the atmosphere, like I said off the top of the show, we would be seeing uh, some fog trying to develop, but the wind is helping to prevent that. We've got about 10 mile per hour winds on average, 14 in New Braunfels, and there are a few wind gusts out there, 17 mile per hour gust up there around Bernie stage, and it's going to be, like I said, on the breezy side throughout the day. So here's the satellite picture going back into last night and as expected computer models picked up this up very well we had those huge storms developing we kept getting round after round of rain that moved through bear county some of those storms did produce uh, severe weather some large hail and even late last night up there to the northeast of austin and most everything has now moved on out there's nothing showing up on radar right now there could be 
just a stray little shower around here uh, this morning, especially down to the southeast. That would be the extent of it, you know, one or two of them here and there. But throughout the rest of today, we're going to keep I think we just keep a lot of clouds today. I doubt if we see any sunshine, maybe a little bit out to the west, but that's going to help to keep temperatures down as well. Cloudy skies overnight and then a little bit more in the way of some sunshine tomorrow. Same thing on Friday and we keep these nice dew points around here, but then look what happens into the weekend. It is going to get muggy again, a lot more moisture in the atmosphere and that though is going to be squeezed out with some more rain this weekend. 66 today at noon, cloudy skies, and again, a sprinkle around here this morning, one or two, that's gonna be about it. Breezy, I'm only going for 68 for a high temperature today. It's definitely going to be on the cool side. Obviously, there's no severe threat out there today, and Going into tomorrow, then we start off at 60 again, maybe some upper 50s. Same thing on Friday, uh, 75 tomorrow, and we are going to be seeing a little bit more sunshine the next couple of days. And then the rain moves on in here as we go into the weekend, and that's going to go into the first part of next week as well. Again, the, the theme here that we like is we're keeping the 90s at bay for now. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. And you get a lot of moisture in the ground huh? that helps because when you get the really dry, you know, dry conditions, things heat up a little more easily. Mm -hmm. The moisture does tend to keep temperatures down now as to the humidity factor. But could we have a repeat of 2007? I'm, I, I'm always hopeful. That's when we didn't hit last time we didn't hit 100. You know what happened right before the storms last night? I walked outside. All of a sudden it was like a swarm of mosquitoes is like, we're that's, back, buddy. That's <laughs> true. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the payoff. I mean, they were everywhere <laughs> last night. Look around your house for any standing water. Dump yeah, that. That's true. Definitely. Yep. All right. Thank you, Mike. Good advice. 451, about 63 degrees. And still ahead, some big name Hollywood shows making a comeback. We'll tell you when shows like Hamilton, The Lion King, and Wicked are scheduled to reopen. Pick three numbers. Three one six Fireball two daily four four nine six two Fireball five cash five five nine sixteen twenty nine thirty four and your Mega Million seven eight twenty thirty six thirty nine Mega Ball twenty two Mega Flyer three. Good luck. I love making her laugh during the commercial breaks. Uh, Billie Eilish celebrating another big honor, plus some big name Hollywood shows will soon be open again on Broadway. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Dua Lipa probably levitating after the Brit Awards Tuesday night, where she took home Best Album for Future Nostalgia. Before the show, she said it was a win just to be nominated. It means a lot to me, and the album means so much to me, and I feel like it's helped me grow so much as an artist and as a performer, and to be recognized for that means the world. The Brit Awards, the British equivalent of the Grammys, also honored Billie Eilish with the International Female Solo Artist Award in the weekend with International Male Solo Artist. Billboard blowing up Drake's cell phone, naming the Canadian rapper its artist of the decade. During the 2010s, Drake scored a leading nine number one albums, eight number one singles, with 45 top tens and a record 232 total entries on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. Drake will get the artist of the decade award at the Billboard Music Awards, live Sunday, May 23rd. Some big name Broadway shows have set dates for a comeback. Hamilton, The Lion King, and Wicked will return to the stage September 14th. Broadway shows have been closed since March 2020 because of the pandemic. And happy birthday today to Oscar winner Rami Malek. The Bohemian Rhapsody star is 40, while The Falcon and the Winter Soldier star Emily Van Camp is 35. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 456. And still ahead on GMSA, panic buying of fuel becoming a problem following that recent pipeline cyber attack. How the government is trying to get everyone to calm down. Need help finding a new job? Quite a few people do. TikTok trying to help out with a brand new tool. We'll tell you how it works coming up in your Morning Tech Bites. And also ahead on GMSA at 6, we're hoping to learn more about a 7-year-old boy who got caught in a rip current. He has not been found. That's ahead in our 6 o'clock hour of GMSA. And Transguide right now, 281 at Hildebrand. Samuel King is here. We'll have an update coming up from him at the top of the hour. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Happening now on the city's south side, San Antonio police and SWAT have an armed man surrounded. I'm Stephen Cavazos, and coming up this morning on GMSA, a five-hour standoff and what we know so far. 
More than 1,000 gas stations in the southeast reported running out of fuel following that recent pipeline cyber attack. But experts say the attack itself is not to blame. More showers and storms moved through last night. This morning we're left with breezy and cooler conditions. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, May 12th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Grab that extra cup of coffee. Uh, hopefully you had a good night's sleep. Um, did you sleep through? the rain this time around? I actually did this okay, time. Okay, good, good, good job. And well, I think we're done with the rain, but at least it's uh, for now, for today, right? Yeah, uh, there's maybe a leftover shower around this morning, especially down to the southeast, just one or two of them, but all of the, the heavy rain and it's pretty much out of the picture. But right now we do get a chance to uh, sort of dry out for at least a, a couple of days and before the next round of rain moves on in here, 63 as of right now and a nice little breeze out of the north primarily about uh, 10, 15 miles per hour. Dew point. 59, which below anytime you're below 60, that's fantastic. But you know, you got to compare that dew point to the temperature and that's where you get the relative humidity at 87%. So that's relatively high, although uh, with that breeze, which is helping us out this morning, preventing a lot of any real thick fog to form up. Look at temperatures today. Excuse the grammar, ain't going anywhere. We're just going to be staying in the upper 60s here in town. You get a peak of sunshine off to the west and may hit 70. But yeah, we're definitely going to be cool about Anywhere from 15 to close to 20 degrees below the normal high temperature, which is mid 80s this time of year. The aquifer went down two tenths of a foot and the allergens. Obviously, it hasn't reacted to, from yesterday to that all the rain we had last night. Mold is on the moderate side and uh, boy, I tell you one thing. You take a look at uh, radar and again, not anything really showing up out there. A little sprinkle or two here or there. All the heavy rain has moved on out, but you look at the wind and uh, yeah, out of the north, it's a nice little breeze. Jacket's not a bad idea when you've got some 50s in this breezy condition, even a couple of gusts, 21 out there at the airport, gust to 24 in New Braunfels. It will stay somewhat breezy throughout the rest of today. You know, maybe still a shower, like I said this morning, coolish. Um, although what's interesting is we're not that far below what the normal, the average low temperature is, which is 65 degrees as of right now, but it just feels so darn nice out there and coolish. And uh, later on today, just going with cloudy, cool, breezy. Who would have thought we'd be seeing that in the second week of May and some sunshine tomorrow. Same thing on Friday, mid 70s, mid upper 70s, really pleasant. And then the weekend, we got some more uh, showers and storms moving on in here and mid 80s. It looks like rain chances may even extend into the first part of next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and I don't know, did you see any like puddles on the road or anything coming into work? Not uh, really, uh, but uh, there not many, uh, but it was cool and nice and cool and refreshing, especially compared to uh, the past couple of days. Mike, good morning to you. Good morning to uh, everyone. Uh, just a few issues here and there this morning are off to a good start just after 5 a.m. And so let's take a look at one issue we have, this icon means stalled vehicle, and that is what we have at I-10 westbound at Vance Jackson, but we still we're still in the green there, so that's good. I uh, had some construction overnight again on Loop 410, so we had a bit of a slowdown here approaching uh, Marbach Road. But as that construction is wrapping up, uh, things are opening up there on uh, the west side. Uh, so Loop 410 at Marbach opening up and you're back up to 64 miles per hour. So that's good. Let's take a look at some travel times around the region. We mentioned uh, I-10. 25 minutes coming in from Bernie into downtown San Antonio, 29 minutes coming in from Seguin, looking at 35, 26 minutes from New Braunfels, and 17 minutes coming into downtown San Antonio from the Lytle area. This is Loop 410 at Babcock, as you can see, looks fine this morning, as does 37 at Jones. And we'll have another update coming up. An ongoing standoff of the city south side now lasting over five hours. San Antonio police and their SWAT team have an armed man surrounded at a location off South New Braunfels Avenue east of I-37. Stephen Cavazos joins us there live. And Stephen, what is the scene looking like now? Mark Stephanie, a very heavy police presence here this morning. San Antonio police, along with their SWAT team and EMS, have that man surrounded at a location right behind us. We've also heard what sounds like a family member trying to negotiate with that man as well, asking him to drop the gun. We want to show you what we're looking at right now. Again, a very heavy presence out here this morning uh, surrounding this parking lot, which looks like it's an HEB parking lot, actually. Now, right now, that man is, again, contained to a location here. This all started when customers at this HEB actually told police that man was walking around the parking lot with a gun threatening to shoot himself. A sergeant on the scene does tell us that this all happened just before 11 last night and has continued now for over five hours. And this morning, SAPD and SWAT continue
continue to negotiate with that man to drop the gun. Again, we have heard what sounds like a family member also negotiating with that man, asking him to drop the weapon. It's not clear why he was holding it, but again, customers reported to police that he was actually threatening to shoot himself. We are staying out here to bring you the very latest on this developing story, so stay with us throughout the morning. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. The family of the six-year-old girl shot and killed at a car meet on Mother's Day speaking out. Julio Garcia and Cassandra Mendoza say they took their kids, including Soraya Perez, to the West Side car meet. They say it's something they do as a family. Garcia says as they were leaving, he was blocked in by a truck. He said that escalated to people kicking and hitting his vehicle. San Antonio police say Andrew Elizondo fired shots at the vehicle, hitting young Soraya. He was arrested for capital murder. Soraya's family saying they won't be satisfied until everyone involved is in custody. My daughter will get justice for what they did to her. I don't care for myself, but my daughter, no. I'm not gonna stop. I'm not. I'm nowhere close to being done. Chief William McMahon has said investigators are looking into any more possible arrests. If you have any information that could help in the case, you are asked to call police. In the wake of that pipeline cyber attack, more gas stations across the southeast U.S. are running dry as long lines are forming at the pumps. Now, four governors have declared a state of emergency. And as ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, the Biden administration is looking to assure Americans that there's no reason to panic. Overnight, growing concern about the number of gas stations running on E, stemming from that cyber attack on a pipeline that supplies nearly half the fuel on the East Coast. This is potentially the most substantial and damaging attack on U.S. critical infrastructure ever. Gas stations in at least seven states are reporting shortages from Florida to Virginia, and supply issues appear to be creeping north. According to Bloomberg, distributors say they're now getting gas on a ration basis in Linden, New Jersey, where the 5,500-mile critical pipeline ends. A cyber attack five days ago forced its operator, Colonial Pipeline, to shut down the pipeline, causing shortages and sending prices climbing. It was at like, what, 296 to 298 a gallon, but it's possible by the end of the week, it could go up another three to seven cents. Colonial is expected to decide today whether it can fully restart the pipeline, but it could still take days for the fuel to reach places impacted by the shutdown. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm asking people not to panic buy. Much as there um, was no cause for, say, hoarding toilet paper at the beginning of the pandemic, there should be no cause for hoarding gasoline. The FBI identified the group responsible for the attack as Darkside, a gang of hackers based in Russia in a brazen scheme to extort money. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And time now is 5.07 and it's about 63 degrees right now. Need some extra help finding a job? TikTok wants to help. We'll tell you how coming up. And also next, a big change coming through the Texas legislature could make it more difficult to hold companies responsible for crashes involving big rigs. We'll tell you what this means for you. And more on your traffic and weather coming up right here on GMSA as we look back towards downtown San Antonio on your Wednesday morning. You're watching GMSA. 5-11, more traffic authority coverage now. Big debate over a bill in Austin impacting lawsuits after crashes involving big rigs. Consumer groups say it will make it more difficult to hold companies responsible, but supporters of the bill say it will crack down on excessive lawsuits. Art Samuel King joins us now to break it all down. Yeah, a big debate over this bill, Mark and Stephanie. House Bill 19 has already passed that chamber, and the Senate Transportation Committee is set to hold a public hearing on this bill in just a couple of hours, the bill has seen some changes along the way, but the bottom line is there will be new limits on what plaintiffs can bring up at trial, and especially in the first phase, which determines compensatory damages. A safety violation would have to be the direct cause of an incident, or found to be the direct cause of an incident. A company's safety record could only be brought up in the second part of a trial. Consumer groups say the bill would let companies off the hook, but trucking companies say the limits are necessary because the amount of lawsuits and damages are becoming out of control, driving up insurance costs. Growing at such a uh, great rate in the last couple of years alone uh, that is putting businesses um, out of business, frankly. So this is something that um, the industry sorely needs. We want safer roads and we can actually guarantee 
that safer roads will bring down insurance costs. And they can't say the same thing about this complicated legal maneuver that they're trying to pull. The number of deaths and crashes involving big rigs have doubled in the past 10 years, according to TechStop, while the bill sponsors say the number of motor vehicle lawsuits overall has also doubled in that time. If the committee approves the bill, it will go on to the full Senate. Then both chambers would have to work out any differences before it would go to Governor Greg Abbott for his consideration. This year's regular session is, in, is set to end on Memorial Day, Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. 513, about 63 degrees. And if you're trying to get back to work, now is the perfect time. Up next, how TikTok is stepping up to get people back on the job with a handy new tool. From prom dresses to workouts and new adventures, you hope the more you give, the less they'll miss. But even if your teen was vaccinated against meningitis in the past, they may be missing vaccination for meningitis B. Although uncommon, up to one in five survivors of meningitis will have long-term consequences. Now, as you're thinking about all the vaccines your teen might need, make sure you ask your doctor if your teen is missing meningitis B vaccination. Anything your wild child does, Pampers Cruisers 360 Fit can too. With a stretchy waistband and adaptive 360 Fit. So they can move the way they were born to. Born to be wild. Pampers Cruisers 360 Fit. People today, they could spend half their lives over 50. That's a lot of living. So make sure the good things in life live as long as you do. This is just slow-mo karate. Just slow-mo karate. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. Join today. In today's Tech Bytes, TikTok is reportedly launching a new job hunting feature. The website, Axios, says users will be able to post TikTok video resumes to connect with potential employers. And companies could use the app like a recruiting tool. The test platform is actually a separate web page accessible through TikTok. Next, Instagram is starting to let people list their pronouns on their profiles. Up to four of them can be added and users can choose to display them publicly or only to their followers. Instagram offers a form you can submit if you're specific specific pronoun isn't on the list of those already available. And Bose is now in the hearing aid business. Next week, the company begins selling devices to adults who have mild to moderate hearing loss. The sound control hearing aids will be sold in five states next week before being offered around the country. And those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Back here at home, he's the pitcher and captain of the Samuel Clements High School baseball team and hopes to one day work on a ranch taking care of wildlife. Today's great graduate is Jackson Bach, and as Sarah Costa reports, his teachers and counselors say Jackson has a bright future ahead of him because of his work ethic and positive attitude. Jackson Bach has been playing baseball since he was in the second grade. Now he's a pitcher at Samuel Clemens High School. He says baseball has taught him lessons off the pitcher's mound as well, like how to get through a pandemic in your senior year of high school. Right now we're, we're faced with adversity and we, we just need a win. It's, it's a teamwork deal. If, when, we, when we play as a team, we win as a team. Next year, he'll be attending Texas A&M Kingsville University, where he hopes to walk onto the baseball team. But his main goal is to study wildlife, where he hopes to work on a ranch like the King Ranch one day. It all started with my dad, and we've always been fishing or hunting and just the passion for it and just seeing the conservation of it. Those who have watched Jackson excel in school say it's his personality that really makes him stand out. I think he's one of the most gregarious um, young men that I think I've ever met. But what Jackson's counselor, Vicki Williams, says makes him so special is his positive attitude and outlook on life. He has a different vision. You know, kids these days will use the word woke. He's woke in all dimensions of the word. Um, and he just has a different level of maturity than some of his same age peers. That maturity and positive outlook helped Jackson overcome his biggest obstacle in school, getting diagnosed with dyslexia in third grade. But he doesn't see it as a learning disability and isn't ashamed of it. He says it just taught him how to work harder. He says he hopes other students who face similar issues embrace their differences. Don't be afraid to be different. It's just like glasses. <laughs> I mean, people have to have glasses to read. I just need a little extra help on reading without them. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News.
Good luck, Jackson. Yeah, good luck. Great story. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King to see how things are looking on our roadways. Things looking uh, mostly good uh, this morning, Mark and Stephanie. Uh, not too many issues uh, out there to start today. So if you're someone who needs to get going early, this would be a good time to do so. Just a couple of things here and there. The first one uh, is still out here on the east side. Excuse me, the uh, loop 1604 at uh, I-10. Have some slowdowns here on 1604 here that has uh, cleared up very quickly there. So again, hit and miss uh, some things there. But again, 1604 on the east side may might encounter some slowdowns right now. I uh, still have a port of this stalled vehicle. This is I-10 westbound at Vance Jackson Road. Taking a look at uh, Bandera Road had some delays here earlier, but right now looking good 11 minutes from 410 to 1604, eight minutes the other way across the stretch of Bandera Road. So that's fairly good for this hour. Looking at Transguide 281 at Hildebrand, looks fine this morning. And uh, 37 at Jones, looking well this morning, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Mike, I live just north of the airport, and the storms are all around me. I was like, please, I just want to hear some thunder. I want to get some rain. <laughs> Wanted to get in on the action last night. You know, it, it's funny because I was looking at some of the numbers out at the airport, and it was less than two-tenths of an inch. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but then around there, I mean, some folks got two, three inches of rain. Here's a rain gauge picked up, uh, what's that, about an inch and, well, two inches or so in that rain gauge over there right around uh, Bernie. And, yeah, a lot, a lot of places even more than that, especially down to the south where there were some really big uh, storms out there. Now, everything is pretty much settled out. Almost looks like there's a, still a sheen on the road over by uh, the airport on 410. 63 here in town, 58 Comfort, 57 Bernie Stage, and 65 in Castroville. Humidity. We go by this chart. Everybody is about at 60 or just below that. Now, relative to the temperature, it's very high, uh, but it's really comfortable out there. And we've got a good breeze, 10, 15 mile per hour winds right now. We do have some wind gusts. It was gusting about 24 just within the half hour up there around New Braunfels, 21 at the airport, 18 Bernie stage. And we are going to be seeing wind gusts uh, throughout the rest of today. To about 15, 20 mile per hour winds and then gusting about 25 or even higher than that at times today. So most of the rain was, you know, the other day it was right along the, the US 90 corridor and now it's pretty much north and south from, well, up there around Kendall County, just east of Kerrville, down in toward Catula, halfway between Catula and Beeville. And some of those rainfall amounts about five inches down there just to the west of Beeville, right around Live Oak County. Uh, three and a half inches it, just to the east of Catula. And then we got some of those three inch rain amounts all around just to the northwest, especially and a lot of this is in the recharge zone and then in and around the metropolitan area. Again, there's the airport right there and hardly picked up anything, but just what the stones throw away from that a little more than two inches of rain and up there northwest of uh, Helotus, about three, almost four inches of rain. So yeah, a lot of it, beautiful rain out there, and we have more in store by the weekend. Today, though, we get a chance to dry out a little bit. A leftover shower or two this morning, maybe, and then just plenty of clouds. That's going to help to keep temperatures down throughout the day today, and pretty much the same thing tomorrow. I think we'll have a little bit more in the way of some sunshine, perhaps tomorrow. Then Saturday, rain moves back on in here. Showers and thunderstorms could have a couple of heavier downpours here and there, and that's going to be the situation going into Sunday as well. And it looks like we'll have at least some rain sticking around Monday and maybe even into Tuesday, a little bit more in the way of some rain. So again, I keep saying what two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we were like, we need rain. And now all of a sudden it's almost too much in some places. 66 today at noon and high temperature of only 68 degrees today. We're going to be well below normal by a good 15, almost 20 degrees. And tomorrow starting off at 60, same thing Friday morning, which means 50s in the hill country. We are going to make it to the mid 70s tomorrow, upper 70s on Friday. A little more sunshine. Rain comes back in here then over the weekend back to the 80s. I think I stole all your rain, Mark. Sorry about that. Did you? Yeah, I took it all. I was I'm a little greedy. Stuff. Yeah, in, our, in our neighborhood, it was coming down. <laughs> it really like, was. Right around all dinner right. time. I'm okay with that. Every, we need it. 523 on your Wednesday morning. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Demi Lovato hunts for aliens. And plus, why MTV is set to honor Scarlett Johansson with a major award. An award-winning performer is back with something to prove. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in the Hollywood Minute. 
Demi Lovato is going after UFOs. The singer-songwriter intends to prove aliens are out there in the Peacock Network limited series Unidentified with Demi Lovato. According to the show description, she'll interview scientists and alien abductees and even do her own experiments. Phew. Melanie Laurent awakens in a cryogenic pod not knowing who she is or how she got there in the claustrophobic thriller Oxygen. She must figure out her identity in order to escape before the air runs out. Oxygen debuts on Netflix today. Scarlett Johansson is set to be honored at this year's MTV Movie and TV Awards. She'll receive the Generation Award, which goes to actors whose contributions to film and television has made them household names. The 2021 MTV Movie and TV Awards air live from Los Angeles Sunday night. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Right now we are at 527. And still ahead on GMSA, drivers are aggressively filling up their tanks after a ransomware attack shut down the Colonial Pipeline. Why experts say that panic buying is causing more problems than the cyber attack itself. And are you trying to get your body in shape for summer? This is not the way. <laughs> we'll tell you about a brand new Starbucks drink that is definitely not in your diet, but sure tastes really, really good. And it's pretty. <laughs> Head on GMSA at 6 as people continue to face hardships as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. You may now be eligible to receive a discount on your internet bill. We're going to tell you how at 6. Making headlines this morning, parts of the U.S. could soon be facing a fuel shortage. We said part, but it's not because of what you might think. A woman and a pickup cross paths on this southeast side street, and the results are not good. The woman has died. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are in the low 60s. As you can see, Katrina was wearing her jacket. It's nice and cool out there. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday, May 12th. We are in the middle of National Police Week. Yes, thank you guys for what you do and thank you for your service. Mike is here with more on our forecast this morning. Bit on the cool side may surprise some people as they walk out the door, Mike. Yeah, it's kids have to wait at a bus stop. You know, jacket's not a bad idea and you may want to keep it handy throughout the rest of the afternoon just because temperatures really are not going to go up all that much. As you can see, we've got plenty of clouds out there. No rain is being picked up on radar right now. There may be a little leftover sprinkle here or there, but um, I kind of doubt it. 63 is the temperature. Dew point is at 59. So relative to that temperature, the humidity is relatively high, but of course that number is below 60. So it is comfortable out there and the wind is out of the northeast, north to northeast at about 13 miles per hour. And we've got a nice breeze around there. That's helping to really prevent any fog from forming up. Watch it because we have relatively high humidity, all the moisture in the ground in low lying areas. Just kind of watch out if the wind slackens off slightly, but uh, that's helping to prevent a lot of that fog. And we're seeing about 10 15 mile per hour winds gust to 21 out there at the airport and it is going to be on the breezy side throughout the day mold is moderate it's probably my guess would be it's going to be staying up there somewhat just because of all the moisture hanging around here and throughout the rest of today a lot of clouds clouds and all the moisture and some other factors wind out of the northeast going to keep temperatures down 68 normal high temperature the average is 85 believe it or not no complaints here, and it's going to stay very nice the next couple of days. Chance to dry out before the next round of rain comes on in here. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. Anything big going on out there, sir? Nothing too big at the moment. Now's a uh, good time to uh, get ready if you need to or someone in your household needs to head out. Not seeing too many issues out there. Still have that stalled vehicle uh, reported there at I-10 West at Van Jackson, but we imagine that'll be cleared out pretty soon here. Also had some delays uh, near the airport on 281 approaching uh, 410. Those have cleared for the moment, but we still have uh, these delays there at uh, San Pedro. Looking at the uh, travel times around the region coming in from Boverde on 281, 26 minutes to downtown San Antonio, 19 minutes from Castroville on US 90 into San Antonio, and 28 minutes from the Pleasanton area again into downtown. Taking a look at Transguide 281 at Hildebrand, not too many cars on the road at the moment. That looks fine. We'll have another update coming up.
An overnight standoff on the south side continues this morning. A San Antonio police and their SWAT team try to convince an armed man to drop a gun. This is happening now off of South New Braunfels Avenue east of I-37. Stephen Cavazos is live there. And Stephen, what do you know right now? Yeah, Mark Stephanie, efforts to get that man to drop the gun have now been going on for almost six hours now. We've actually overheard negotiators that have been asking that man to not just drop the weapon, but let them know that they're here to help. We've also heard what sounds like family members, our loved ones, asking that man to cooperate. Now, right now, he is barricaded himself somewhere at a location right behind us. This is actually right next to an HEB parking lot, and there is a heavy presence out here this morning with SAPD, their SWAT team, and EMS all on the scene. This started when customers at this HB had actually told police the man was walking around the parking lot with a gun and was threatening to shoot himself. A sergeant on the scene does tell us this happened just before 11 last night and of course has lasted well into this morning and right now again SAPD and SWAT continue to negotiate with that man to drop the gun. We are still out here waiting to get some more information from San Antonio police as they continue to negotiate with that man. So stay with us as we bring you the latest on this developing story. Mark Stephanie back to you. Thank you, Stephen. A few missteps have cost a woman her life. San Antonio police say she crossed paths with a pickup. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened in the 2000 block of South WW White Road. Now, Katrina, are police looking at charging that driver? Not at this time. In fact, they told us that no charges are pending. What happened last night appears to have been an accident. Police say that the woman who was hit by the pickup was in her 60s, but somehow she ended up in the path of that truck around 9.30 last night on South W.W. White. This is right in front of Big Lou's Pizza. The woman was hit, then taken to a hospital, but police say she died on the way there. I just checked with the medical examiner's office, and so far they have not identified that woman. And it seems that police will not release the name of the driver either because they say, again, no charges are pending. Reporting live on the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. More and more gas stations on the East Coast and in the Southeast running out of gas as people anxiously fill their tanks after a ransomware attack shut down a crucial pipeline. And as CNN's Rick Conway reports, there's not a fuel shortage right now, but fear could fuel one. Panic at the pump. No, it's out. After a ransomware attack shut down the Colonial Pipeline Friday, which is still mostly offline. The 5,500 mile pipeline supplies about 45% of all fuel used on the East Coast, where nervous drivers have been lining up and filling up. Station after station is running out. We don't have no more. AAA says the price of a gallon of gas has shot up more than seven cents in the last week. Certainly, demand is up, but what about supply? It's not that we have a gasoline shortage, it's that we have this supply crunch. Meaning the fear of running out of fuel is fueling supply issues. Let me emphasize that much as there um, was no cause for, say, hoarding toilet paper at the beginning of the pandemic. There should be no cause for hoarding gasoline. This will probably be all cleared up uh, in a few days, maybe by the end of the week, if we're lucky. Uh, the U.S. has a fairly large supply of gasoline in reserve. By the end of today, Colonial Pipeline could make a decision about a full restart. But just in case it's delayed, a number of states and the EPA have taken emergency steps to ease supply concerns. In the meantime, officials are asking for patience before pumping. It will take a few days to ramp up operations. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Senate Republicans appear to be uniting, trying to block a sweeping election reform bill. Last night, the Rules Committee deadlocked on the measure along party lines. Democrats are likely to use procedural options to get it on the floor, but Republicans could have the votes to block it there. GOP leaders say the bill would give Democrats too much power in overhauling election law. Democrats say the point is to dial back new restrictions passed by Republican leaders in several states. President Biden will host his first meeting at the White House with the big four congressional leaders tomorrow morning. For the Republicans at Senate, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. On the Democratic side, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The White House has billed the meetings a chance to find common ground on the nation's most pressing issues.
This morning, the Biden administration is announcing it is moving forward with the nation's first large-scale offshore wind project. It's a significant step toward achieving President Biden's goal of increasing U.S. renewable energy production. The government announced the 800-megawatt vineyard wind project set to be located off the shore of Martha's Vineyard and will include up to 84 turbines. It will create an estimated 3,600 jobs and power 400,000 homes and businesses. Back here at home, 539. We're at uh, 63 degrees officially. And still ahead, another major retailer launching its own line of plant-based foods. We're going to tell you what's on the menu. These women fighting for their sons' lives. Two, men's, two moms, rather, speaking out for their children, determined to change the system and help millions of mentally ill people. We have details next. And taking a look outside with a live cam. That's right, we are at May 12th, and it is in the low 60s this morning. We are going to enjoy this and check in with Mike later on. 542 May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And did you know one in 17 people in the U.S. are living with a mental illness? And more than 8 million people struggle with schizophrenia. Lack of funding, resources, and an overall misunderstanding of the illness is creating a vicious cycle that leaves many people undiagnosed, locked up, or homeless. So now two moms living thousands of miles apart are working to change the system and the stigma of schizophrenia. Our David Sears has details. You are so stupid. This is what it sounds like to have schizophrenia. Do it. Do it. No, 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 don't. Don't. His reality is not like our reality. Staring off, like not at you, but through you. These two mothers are working to alter the way we treat people with this mental illness. When the cops found him, he was cowering in the corner saying somebody was trying to kill him. Janet Vanderlack's son, Matthew, spent the next several weeks in jail. That's why she's determined to change how the courts deal with the mentally ill. With the STAR program, that takes away the, the police and, and inserts um, social workers. No one-on-one -on -one operators are trained to recognize non-threatening calls. Instead of calling police, they call in mental health counselors. On all 107 we've been on, there hasn't been one time where we've had to call police. Meanwhile, Paula Kegelman is working to change the stigma surrounding schizophrenia. Her son David was diagnosed at 17. The hurdles she faced? access to care and affordable housing. There's waiting lists to get in to see psychiatrists now. In fact, 77% of U.S. counties have reported a severe shortage of psychiatrists. Paula dedicated her life to helping people find help. There's two things, two emotions that people feel immediately when this strikes their family, hopeless and that they're all alone. Those two things are completely inaccurate, that there is hope and that we are definitely not alone. About 383,000 people with severe mental illness are behind bars nationwide. If you or your loved one need help with mental illness, you can contact the National Alliance of Mental Illness. David Sears, KSO 12 News. And time now is 544 and about 63 degrees right now. How about a nice strawberry funnel cake for breakfast? Up next, we'll tell you just how many calories are packed into this new Starbucks drink. And welcome back. It's about 547 in your morning consumer headlines. Investors seeking a pure play on lingerie will soon have a new option. Victoria's Secret is going public. The troubled retailer is owned by L Brands, which also owns Bath and Body Works. The parent company has been trying to offload Victoria's Secret for months after a deal for a private equity firm to buy it went bust. L Brands now says spinning the store off on its own symbol will provide shareholders with more value than just selling it. The transaction is expected to be completed in August when Bath & Body Works will also start trading under its own ticker. Attention Target shoppers, the chain is launching its own line of plant-based foods. The retailer announcing the new collection under its Good & Gather brand. The assortment features more than 30 meat and dairy alternatives. They include vegan spreads, plant-based dips, as well as imitation meat and chicken products with items priced under $8. Target says the new food will gradually roll out on its website and in the stores throughout the fall. Starbucks is launching its first new limited flavor in more than three years. Meet the strawberry funnel cake frappuccino. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Clocking in about as many calories as a double cheeseburger at McDonald's 
oh no, breaking my heart, about 450 calories. This drink may be really tasty, but it isn't going to do much for your beach body. The beverage contains a blend of strawberry puree and whipped cream. Then it's topped with an actual funnel cake pieces. Oh, it's delicious, including the powdered sugar. It's part of the restaurant's summer menu, which also includes a new cake pop shaped like a unicorn. What you, what you do is you just go to the beach, you drink this drink without a, with, with reckless abandon, and just sit there and just rub your belly with happiness. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just be happy. Be content. <laughs> yeah. Be content. Have a drink. Yeah. Once it's in a while. Summertime. This yeah. was strawberry shortcake frappuccino. frappuccino. Okay. Sounds delicious. Funnel cake. Funnel cake. Funnel cake. Funnel cake. Yeah. Frappuccino. Yes. Say it's that like three like times a, fast in the drive-through, Samuel King. A cup full of sugar. Mm-hmm. Caffeine. Yes. But, you know, it's, yeah. uh, <laughs> can't have too many of those. But if you are heading out, uh, maybe to get that, I don't know if it's available yet, but something else at Starbucks or some other establishment, uh, things mostly looking good across uh, the area. We do have uh, one situation here on Loop 410 at Ingram eastbound lanes. There is a stalled uh, vehicle there. So just watch out for that. It is on the right shoulder. Looking at Fredericksburg Road uh, this morning, things are looking fine uh, in this stretch from Heedmer all the way down to Woodlawn, 13 minutes each direction. Not too many delays you'll run into there. We've been talking about gas prices. I guess that's the story of the week here. And they are up two cents on average in Bear County in Texas and across the country. But again, not really seeing the supply issues in Texas because of the pipeline. This is demand, people going out to buy gas and pe more people hitting the roads and the like. But they've been up two cents and they've been up uh, pretty much all week. So just something to watch out for, something to budget for this week. Loop 1604 Old Hausman on Transkai. That looks uh, fine this morning. But of course, we get some delays on 1604 coming up in the next hour or so. So watch out for that, guys. You know, back to that drink, it's not like you're going to drink 10 of them in a day. So that, it's like a treat true. every once in a while. A so, treat. Yeah. Well, maybe, you yeah. know, we can we can work really hard to look nice for the summertime and reward ourselves <laughs> nice. on the beach. So so no need to, to have people, you know, start banning the drink from Starbucks. Just don't drink <laughs> it. No one, so. um, and you're just going to rub your belly with it, right? Yeah. 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 I'm just, just going to indulge yeah, without guilt. <laughs> without guilt. You know what would be really good is just pour that over ice cream. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> What? Am I wrong? <laughs> no. Okay, uh, beautiful yesterday after those storms, and then in Castroville, had a nice rainbow that showed up. Beautiful picture there, and somewhere over there, it looks like you can almost see the end of the rainbow. Don't know if anybody's found a pot of gold, though. Not bad when you step outside. Actually, very nice when you step outside. We don't have any rain. There could be a couple of damp spots left over on the road. A little bit of a breeze out there, and temperatures are in the low 60s and 50s, and it just feels wonderful, especially compared to a couple of mornings ago when uh, you walked into a wall of moisture when you stepped outside, basically, with all the humidity. Wind is about 10, 15 miles per hour, 20 mile per hour winds there in Hondo, and then we do have a couple of gusts, 28 now in New Braunfels, so very very, very breezy up there and that's what's helping to prevent a lot of fog from forming up. If we didn't have much of a breeze out there with all this moisture in the ground and the humidity relative high, relatively high to the temperature, we would have some fog, but there's not uh, much of it out there. Yesterday, of course, I mean, depending on where you were, look at that, a 30 degree, <coughs> excuse me, swing in temperatures. I'm getting that little tickle in my throat. You may have to finish for me here, so. <coughs> You ever get that little tickle in your throat and it doesn't go away? I do. You're going to be okay? Do you want me to jump so. in? 67 in Fredericksburg yesterday. It's 98 in Laredo. And <clears throat> today it's going to be a different story. Oh, buddy, that's okay. No, it's just one of those that you can't, I can't get rid of it. A so bit of coffee. I'll try that. Oh, thank you. Sure. Is that the, oh, that's a, the that's from your strawberry desk. shortcake thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let that's me try that. Thank you. <clears throat> ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> No, it's just every once in a while you get that little tickle. So thank you very much. Anyway, 68 for a high temperature today. And that is going to be obviously down a whole bunch from yesterday. It's just water. I don't think it'll help, but I'll, okay. I'll take it. So, okay. okay. Hmm. That's a strawberry. Thank you. Could you put ice in there for me? Sure. No, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, 71 for... <clears throat> no. 68 in downtown today. Yeah, that did help. Thank you very much. And dew points are going to be uh, on the low side, very comfortable the next couple of days. They do come back up by the weekend, but also that's going to get squeezed out in the form of some more rain around there. So, and, you know, a leftover shower or two today that is possible or this morning, especially. And then 66 today at noon, basically just, I think, cloudy skies and only 68 for a high temperature. It is going to be kind of breezy today. And then the next couple of days, we start off right around 60. 60, upper 50s, 
mid to upper 70s then tomorrow and Friday. A little more sunshine and 80s by the weekend. More rain is going to be moving on in here by the weekend and also starting off the first part of next week. That's one of the great fears when you're doing live television. That little tickle. It happens. Yes. You can't get rid Next of thing yeah. that we were going to try was a fire hose from next door. Oh, OK. Good thing it <laughs> went away. 554, about 63 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, we have 316, Fireball 2. Daily 4, we have 4962, Fireball 5. Cash 5 numbers 5916, 2934, and Mega 7, 8, 20, 36, 39. Mega Ball 22, Mega Plier 3. As we wrap up this half hour, GMSA, I want to tell you about a bet that needs a home <laughs> with Humane Society. I'm in love with this guy. Here's Fabio. He's hoping to find a loving home to call his own with kids older than 12. He's a handsome pity boy rescued from hurricane season last August. Look at that smile. For more information on Fabio and so many others, call 210-226-7461 or visit sahumane.org. He's a very good boy. About three till right now ahead in our next hour of GMSA. It's National Salvation Army Week. We're speaking with one of the leaders who has more on how you can help in their mission to serve those who are less fortunate here in the Alamo City area. And hundreds of alligators removed from Disney World in Orlando over the past several years after a toddler was killed. We have more on that ahead. And we'll have the latest on a standoff happening right now on San Antonio's southeast side. We've had a crew on the scene all morning. We'll get you up to date on that. And Samuel's back with a look at traffic coming up after the break as we look live at 1604 at Old Houseman. Efforts to get an armed man to drop a gun continue now more than six hours later. I'm Stephen Cavazos coming up this morning on GMSA. We're live on the city's south side where a six hour standoff continues. Plus, a woman is dead this morning after she was hit by a truck on the southeast side. We'll have the latest on what investigators say happened. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. That's right, we're in the middle of May and we are experiencing the low 60s. Bravo, bravo. We're going to check in with Mike right now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Wednesday, May 12th. Thanks for joining us this morning. And I think we get a little bit of a break from the rain for those of you who want that break. We had stormy weather in the area again last night. This morning, breezy and cooler, notably cooler for some folks. Yeah, nice little, like you said, nice breeze out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie gives the weather a standing ovation, <laughs> so you know it's going to be good. And yeah, rain is pretty much done. There could be a leftover uh, little sprinkly shower here or there, especially down to the, the southeast. And looks pretty nice out there. And as you can see, even off in the distance, the lights in the buildings are a little bit clearer. We do have somewhat lower humidity, especially compared to what a couple of mornings ago. Remember when it was just the, that intense humidity right now, 62 at the airport, 55 Rock Springs, 58 Fredericksburg and Kerrville at 59. You might need a light jacket this morning and keep it handy throughout the day because a little bit of a breeze, 16 mile per hour winds at the airport, uh, Randolph, Hondo, 17 New Braunfels. And we have had uh, just last hour wind gust up to about uh, 29 at New Braunfels, 28 Eight mile per hour wind gusts at Hondo, 25 at the airport, and with temperatures only in the upper 60s and cloudy skies today, and those breezy conditions, yeah, Jack, it's not a bad idea. Mold is on the moderate side, and uh, throughout the rest of the morning, temperatures are going to stay fairly steady with the cloud cover and the relatively high humidity and all the moisture in the ground out there. The wind is actually doing us a favor this morning because otherwise, if we didn't have much of a breeze and all this moisture in the ground, we'd probably be seeing some fog around the air, but we're not really seeing much, if at all wind out of the northeast today though about 10 20 miles per hour mid 60s today at noon later on that's it. We're just going to make it to the upper 60s. Very, very nice weather. It's fantastic out there. And we do get another uh, couple of days to sort of dry out a little bit for the next few days, but more rain in the forecast that's going to be coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King. What's going on, sir? Hey, good morning, Mike, and good morning to you out there. Not too uh, much going on out there. It's a good time to uh, start getting things ready uh, to leave because we are going to probably see some delays here in the next hour. But even up here in the New Braunfels area, 35 uh, looking good this morning as well as State Highway uh, 46. So that's a good thing there. And looking at travel times coming in from the New Braunfels area, 25 minutes on 35, 27 minutes coming in from Bovardian 281, and 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from the Bernie area. Here's Transguy 281 and Loop 410 near the airport, 35 in Ogalitos. Traffic flowing well this morning. We'll have another update coming up.
Developing now, San Antonio police and their SWAT team have been up all night trying to convince an armed man to drop his gun. That standoff now lasting six hours is happening off of South New Braunfels Avenue east of I-37. Stephen Cavazzo staying on top of the story for us. He's been out there live all morning long. Stephen, what's the latest? Well, so far, Mark and Stephanie, those efforts to get the man to drop the gun has have been unsuccessful this morning. It's been a very, very long night for San Antonio police, along with their SWAT team and EMS, and also a very tough morning. We want to show you what we're looking at right now. This is a very active scene out here. Heavy police presence uh, this morning right next to this HEB parking lot where we're at. And that man has apparently barricaded himself somewhere in that area over there. What we know right now is that this all started just before 11 last night, and people had actually told a sergeant on the scene or police that is that that man was walking around with a gun threatening to shoot himself. Uh, he later barricaded himself at this location and again it has been a very long night as San Antonio police and SWAT continued to try to talk that man down. We've overheard negotiators playing with him saying that they're here to help. We've also heard what sounds like loved ones or family members telling that man to cooperate with authorities but again those efforts have been unsuccessful so far. It's been a very long night for law enforcement agencies out here, but we, we will continue to be out here bringing you the latest as that information, as more information that is, becomes available. Mark Stephanie. A woman was hit and killed by a pickup truck on the east side last night. According to San Antonio Police, the crash happened just before 10 on South WW White near Rigsby. Police say the woman was walking in front of Big Lou's Pizza when the truck hit her. She was taken to a nearby hospital where she died. Her identity remains unknown. Police say the driver of the truck stopped and rendered aid and will not be facing any charges. A new policy is coming to the Bear County Sheriff's Department and its Cadet Academy. The department will now have at least one female instructor present during its cadet classes. This after multiple female students accused their former firearms instructor of improper conduct. In one case, Toribo Gutierrez, a 23-year department veteran, is accused of groping at least one student during shooting drills and making other improper advances. Gutierrez is currently on unpaid administrative leave. Sheriff Javier Salazar says they plan on firing him. To the latest now, coronavirus cases in Bear County, 125 new cases confirmed, along with nine new deaths. That brings the total number of COVID-related deaths in Bear County to 3,400. 210 COVID patients are still in hospital, 68 in ICU, 34 are on ventilators. More children are expected to have a chance to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Trials for the Moderna vaccine in children as young as 12 now underway. The FDA approved Pfizer's vaccine for children between 12 and 15, but some, including health officials in San Antonio, are waiting to hear what the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices has to say. That meeting is set for today. We have more traffic authority coverage now. It'll be an early morning at the state cop capital in Austin as lawmakers discuss a bill changing the rules for lawsuits after crashes involving big rigs. Supporters of the bill say it will crack down on excessive lawsuits. Consumer groups say it will make it more difficult to hold companies responsible for safety violations. Samuel King joins us now with more on the debate in Austin. Samuel? Yeah, this debate has been going on for months, even years. House Bill 19 has already passed that chamber, and the Senate Transportation Committee is set to hold a public hearing on the bill at the top of the hour. That has seen some changes along the way, the bill we're speaking of, but the bottom line is there will be new limits on what plaintiffs can bring up at a trial. For instance, a company safety record could only be brought up in the second part of a trial in a punitive damages phase, not for compensatory damages. Trucking companies say the limits are necessary because the amount of lawsuits and damages are out of control. Consumer groups say the bill would make the roads more dangerous. You want to drive down insurance costs? Let's do it. Let's make our roads safer. But instead, they want special privileges to be able to say we can do whatever we want and you still have to reduce the insurance costs on us. This is not an us against them. It's about what's fair. Um, I would want my kids and my wife to have the same access to the court and fair trial as what we're advocating for. That's the Texas Public Interest Research Group and the Texas Trucking Association there. And experts say the number of crashes involving big rigs have doubled in the past 10 years, while the bill sponsors say the number of motor vehicle lawsuits overall has also 
doubled in that time. Now, if the Transportation Committee decides to move the bill along, it would go to the full Senate, then both chambers would have to work out any differences before it would go to Governor Greg Abbott for his consideration. This year's regular session of the Texas Legislature set to end on Memorial Day, Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. Now to the latest on the impact on the biggest fuel pipeline in the country. Fears of a major gas shortage causing large demand. Four governors have declared a state of emergency and as the pipeline company Colonial works to restore its operations, the Biden administration urging Americans not to panic buy. Much as there um, was no cause for, say, hoarding toilet paper at the beginning of the pandemic, there should be no cause for hoarding gasoline. Colonial is expected to decide whether it can fully restart the pipeline today, but it could still take days for the fuel to reach places impacted by most of the most by the shutdown. 609, about 63 degrees. And here's a I'm Sarah Costa coming up on GMSA. We introduce you to our great graduate from Samuel Clemens High School, where he's a pitcher for the baseball team and has also overcome learning disabilities like dyslexia. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we are in the low 60s this morning after all that rain. And today we get a little bit of a break. We're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your week. And welcome back. It's about 613 now. He's the pitcher and captain of the Samuel Clemens High School baseball team, and he hopes to one day work on a ranch taking care of wildlife. In today's great grad, Sarah Costa introduces us to Jackson Bach. His teachers and counselors say he has a bright future ahead of him because of his work ethic and positive attitude. Jackson Bach has been playing baseball since he was in the second grade. Now he's a pitcher at Samuel Clemens High School. He says baseball has taught him lessons off the pitcher's mound as well, like how to get through a pandemic in your senior year of high school. Right now we're, we're faced with adversity and we, we just need a win. It's, it's a teamwork deal. If, when, we, when we play as a team, we win as a team. Next year, he'll be attending Texas A&M Kingsville University, where he hopes to walk on to the baseball team. But his main goal is to study wildlife, where he hopes to work on a ranch like the King Ranch one day. It all started with my dad, and we've always been fishing or hunting and just the passion for it and just seeing the conservation of it. Those who have watched Jackson excel in school say it's his personality that really makes him stand out. I think he's one of the most gregarious um, young men that I think I've ever met. But what Jackson's counselor, Vicki Williams, says makes him so special is his positive attitude and outlook on life. He has a different vision. You know, kids these days will use the word woke. He's woke in all dimensions of the word, um, and he just has a different level of maturity than some of his same age peers. That maturity and positive outlook helped Jackson overcome his biggest obstacle in school, getting diagnosed with dyslexia in third grade. But he doesn't see it as a learning disability and isn't ashamed of it. He says it just taught him how to work harder. He says he hopes other students who face similar issues embrace their differences. Don't be afraid to be different. It's just like glasses. I mean, people have to have glasses to read. I just need a little extra help on reading without them. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Good message and good attitude there. Congratulations to him and all the great graduates this year. Taking a look at some travel times, 28 minutes coming in from the Pleasanton area on 37, 19 minutes on US 90 from Castroville, 17 minutes coming in from Vital to downtown San Antonio on I-35. Taking a look at the maps, not too much going on this morning. So uh, that's a good thing, but something will be happening on Friday. They're going to try again here to do the full closure of I-10 and Bernie from uh, State Highway 46 down to Scenic Loop Road. They're doing some bridge work there, uh, so they're going to have to close the main lanes of I-10 this weekend. Of course, they were supposed to do this two weeks ago, but we had the heavy rain and the like, so they had to postpone it. But again, they're going to try to do this again next, uh, actually this weekend, beginning on Friday. So two days, uh, full closure of I-10 main lanes from Bernie in Bernie. Looking at uh, Transkai, Loop 410 at San Pedro looks all right, as does Loop 410 at Calabria this morning, guys.
Thank you, Sam. Your mother nature's been pretty generous this month, Mike. Yeah, I mean, feast or famine, as we always say, you know, it sounds cliche, but that was definitely the situation. We were just hurting for rain a few weeks ago, and now it is uh, too much, but we get a break yeah. for the next couple of days, starting with today, and then more. I don't know if that uh, bridge project's going to be... Uh, you know, we'll get that done this weekend because we do have more rain in the forecast for the weekend. Temperatures this morning, we're in the low 60s and uh, even some 50s in parts of the hill country. Just got a mention of a shower, maybe especially down to the southeast. There could be one or two stray ones left over. Wind out of the uh, north to northeast, about 10, 15 miles per hour. It is going to be breezy today, and that's it. 68 for a high. Later on, jacket's a pretty good idea. Maybe a sweatshirt, light sweater. Beautiful picture from yesterday with that nice rainbow after the uh, storms went through. And right now, it almost looks like... Is that my imagination? Or are we trying to get a little bit? Nah, it's just the cloud cover right no, I think there. you're right, Mike. I think there's already a little glow out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, not much. We're not going to be seeing much of any uh, sunshine today just because of the cloud cover. It's going to hang really, really tough. 16 mile per hour winds here in town. Same thing, Randolph. Same thing in Hondo. And then we do have gusts on top of that. 24 in Hondo. It was gusting close to 30 earlier this morning in New Braunfels. And that's going to be the case, especially the first portion of the day. Very, very breezy again. Yesterday, we made it up to 86 in town. And you could tell that there was a front lying through the area, and that was the triggering mechanism, kind of the focal point for some of those showers and thunderstorms. So 67 Fredericksburg got up to 98 in Laredo, a lot better than what, 108, 109 the other day. And today, everybody is going to be much, much cooler. Only 68 degrees here in town. Normal high temperature is 85, so we will be anywhere from 15, almost 20 degrees below normal. Rain chances, nothing today. Just lots of clouds, a little more sunshine the next couple of days. Then all of a sudden by actually maybe late Friday night and in, into Saturday morning, we are going to have some more showers move on in here. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms around. We'll have more on Sunday and some of those may actually extend into Monday and the first portion of next week with some more rain chances around here. And then even some long range computer models have another chance of rain way, way down the road. 66 degrees today at noon, cloudy skies, and then high temperature today getting up to 68. It is going to be on the breezy side. You may want to keep a light jacket handy today. And next couple of days, we'll see a bit more sunshine around here. Pleasant mornings, nice afternoons. Rain chances move back in here. I don't think it's going to be a total washout this weekend, but we will have a, a 40, uh, close to 50% chance for some rain uh, over the weekend. And then going into the first part of next week, temperatures get back up into the mid 80s. And notice the low temperatures, big difference by the first next week, 70s. More humidity back in here. What are you crazy kids up to today at 1? Um, what are we doing today at 1? You know what? You you oh, Jen is live at <laughs> Cool Beans Cafe. It's on the teleprompter right there. Family owned cafe on the north side. Aww. They have and the nice thing is they have a now I remember, thank you. They have a full menu for your pets. Aww. Yes. Okay. That's what we're doing today. And, and humans. And awesome. humans too, yes. Humans so. and uh, instead of charcuterie, it's barcuterie. Yeah. Bark cuterie. Oh, that's cute. Cute. Um, doggy cigar, puppuccino, all sorts of stuff. All right. <laughs> we look forward to it. I didn't look at the rundown for the show yet. So. It's okay. We're here. We're here to help. Thank you, Mike. Six nineteen on your Wednesday morning. It's gonna be a great show, though. Yes. I promise you. <laughs> Our San Antonio Spurs still in the hunt for a playoff spot. We have your preview ahead. My cholesterol is borderline. I figure I can worry about it or do something about it. Garlic helps maintain healthy cholesterol safely and naturally. It's odor and taste free with guaranteed potency. I'm taking charge of my cholesterol with garlic. We're for those who love to discover, who know an open mind is the only kind, who don't need to travel to find something new, who know where to escape, even just for a moment, who don't need a fortune to find a gem, and who know when you spend less, you can discover even more and never, ever stop discovering. Spend less, discover more. At TJ Maxx and Marshalls. To run a growing business is to be on a journey. And along the ride, you'll find many challenges. Your Dell Technologies advisor is here to help, so you can stop at nothing for your customers. In this morning's GMA First Look, the cruise industry versus the state of Florida. Trouble brewing between cruise lines and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. 
Norwegian Cruise Line threatening to pull its ships from the state's ports in places like Tampa, Miami and Key West if the governor doesn't allow them to mandate vaccines on board. Last week, DeSantis doubled down on his vaccine passport ban, signing it into law, blocking businesses or government entities from requiring them. Meanwhile, Norwegian, which is headquartered in Florida, and other lines like Virgin, Royal Caribbean and Celebrity have all made one thing very clear, that all adult passengers and crew are required to be vaccinated before setting sail on their ships. And coming up at 7 a.m., an ABC News exclusive, Michael Strahan goes one-on-one -on -one with the CEO of Norwegian Cruise Line. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News, Miami Beach. The job market sure is changing. The website Axios says its users will be able to post TikTok video resumes to potential employers. Companies would also be able to use the app for recruitment. The test platform is a separate web page accessible through TikTok. Instagram will start letting people list their pronouns on their profiles. Up to four can be added and users can choose to display them publicly or only to their followers. You can also submit a form if your specific pronouns are not available. Bose is now making hearing aids. The speaker company will begin selling devices to adults with mild to moderate hearing loss next week. The hearing aids will be sold in five states at first and then it will be offered in the rest of the country. It is game day. Our Spurs back in action tonight in New York for their final road trip of the regular season. That's after it came through with that statement victory over the high-powered Milwaukee Bucks. Spurs take on the Nets tonight in Brooklyn. Tip-off set for 7 p.m. at Barclays Center. Go Spurs go. Yes, go Spurs go. Time now 624 and about 62 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll be speaking with one of the leaders of the Salvation Army. He's got details on how you can participate in National Salvation Army Week. You don't want to miss it. Workers in Florida have been busy over the last few years removing alligators from around Walt Disney World theme park. More on this in our next half hour. And Samuel is back with a check of Trans Guide and uh, the roads. They're 1604 at Bandera, 410 at Bandera as the morning commute is officially off and running as we approach the bottom of the hour. You're watching GMSA. More to come. An overnight standoff continues on the city's south side where San Antonio police and their SWAT teams have contained an armed man. I'm Stephen Cavazos coming up this morning on GMSA, the latest on this developing story. San Antonio police are calling it an accident. A woman hit and killed by a pickup on the southeast side street. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have more on that. And outside with live cam, we had storms in the area last night. They're now off the coast. Morning clouds in place and pretty cool for mid-May here in South Texas. Welcome back and good morning to you if you're just now tuning in. It's 630 on your Wednesday, May 12th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Go ahead and step outside and enjoy the fresh air. It's really nice. And it's breezy yeah. too this morning, Mike. And it is going to stay breezy throughout much of the day. And it's one of those situations where, you know, temperatures are in the low 60s, which is not cold, but with the moisture out there, it's almost that dampish kind of kind of cool. So jacket's pretty good idea, especially for the little ones if they are waiting at a uh, bus stop and especially in the hill country where we've got temperatures in the 50s right now. But at the airport, 62. Dew points at 56, so we're below 60 on this number, which means it is pleasant out there. But relative to that temperature, there's a, a lot of uh, humidity, and that's why yeah, that damp is cool. Uh, northerly wind, 16 miles per hour, and we do have some gusts on top of that. Uh, 15 Port SA, 15 at Hondo, and 17 New Braunfels. Wind gusts, 25 at the airport, 20 Port SA. It was gusting close to 30 earlier this morning in New Braunfels, and we will see those wind gusts about 25, close to 30 miles per hour, especially the first portion of the day. Mold is on the moderate side, and uh, yeah, cool. Maybe a leftover shower down to the southeast this morning. Just a mention of it. And then I think we basically stay cloudy all day today. Like I said, cool and breezy. Only the upper 60s today. Some sunshine tomorrow. Same thing on Friday. We'll get in the mid and upper-ish 70s after some pleasant mornings. Then the humidity comes back in here over the weekend and we are going to see more showers, even a couple of thunderstorms. Temperatures will be in the mid 80s and we may see rain even extend into the first part of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authorities Samuel King and uh, been a couple little glitches here and there. What's the latest? Uh, not too uh, bad at the moment, Mike. We know that can uh, change 
at any moment. Good morning to you. Good morning to uh, everyone out there. We do have one crash on the board uh, this morning, so we'll take a closer look at that. This one's going to be on uh, the north side here, uh, north of uh, 410 near the airport on Broadway, so not on 410 itself, on Broadway here, uh, just east of the airport. So something if you uh, take Broadway north of 410, something to watch out for this morning. Taking a look on the uh, southwest side here on military uh, between I-35 and Old Piers, all seven minutes and six minutes in the other direction out near Lackland Air Force Base. Some other travel times for you this morning. 28 minutes if you're coming in on I-10 from Seguin into downtown San Antonio and then 19 minutes on US-90 uh, coming in from Castroville and 29 minutes coming in from the Floresville area this morning. And here's a look at Transguide 1604 at Bandera. Already starting to see traffic built there. That's one of the areas, of course, we see uh, some delays pretty early in the morning, so something to watch out for. And we'll have another update coming up. Now to our top story this morning, an ongoing standoff lasting now over six hours. San Antonio police and their SWAT team have an armed man surrounded on the city's south side. This is happening off of South New Braunfels Avenue east of I-37. Our Stephen Cavazos has been out there all morning long. What's the latest as of 632, Stephen? Yeah, Mark, Stephanie, those efforts to get the man uh, to drop the gun have been going on since last night. We've been out here all morning long hearing or overhearing negotiators pleading with that man to not just drop the gun, but let them know that they're here to help. We've also heard what sounded like family members or loved ones asking that man to cooperate with authorities. But so far, all those efforts have been unsuccessful. And right now that man has been uh, contained off to this location right next to this HEB parking lot. And there is a heavy presence out here. It's been going on since last night. SAPD, their SWAT team and EMS all out here. This did start when customers at this HB had told police that man was walking around the parking lot with a gun and was threatening to shoot himself. Now, a sergeant on the scene does tell us this happened just before 11 last night and has continued well into this morning where SAPD and SWAT continue to have that man contain, pleading with him to drop the gun. Now, we still don't have much more information other than that, but of course, as we mentioned earlier, we have been over here negotiators pleading with that man as well as family members asking him to cooperate. We will continue to bring you the latest and we'll stay at her, stay out here this morning as that information becomes available. Reporting live on the city south side, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. The medical examiner working to identify a woman who died after being hit by a pickup on San Antonio's southeast side. The crash happened in the 2000 block of South WW White. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now Katrina, how did this happen? Well, we are still working to get all of the details from San Antonio police, but we do know that the woman somehow ended up in the path of a pickup. It happened right out here on South WW White Road in front of Big Lou's Pizza. The police say at this time it looks like it was just an accident. They told us they were not charging the driver in any way. The woman who was hit by the truck around 930 last night was in her 60s, according to officers. After she was hit by the truck, she was taken to a hospital by ambulance. Police told us that she died on the way there. They say the driver did stop and try to help the woman, and they say at this time it doesn't look like he was at fault. They are not planning, again, on filing any charges against that person. Reporting live on the southeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, we're hoping to learn more information about a missing seven-year-old boy who was caught in a rip current in the Galveston area. That happened around 7.30 last night while he was at the beach with his family. Galveston Beach Patrol and the Coast Guard are involved in this search. We're going to bring you updates on the story as new information becomes available. Americans can begin applying for $50 off their monthly internet bill today. It's part of an emergency government program to keep people connected during the pandemic. Programs are part of the $900 billion pandemic relief package passed back in December. Right now, uh, on this story, you can find out if you are eligible. 226 alligators have been removed from Disney World. This after two-year-old Lane Thomas Grave was killed by an alligator at the park back in 2016. Disney has also taken measures to keep visitors away from the resort's lakes and has put up signs warning about snakes and alligators. You can read more about both stories on our website at ksat.com. 635. Ahead on GMSA, we're going to hear from one of the leaders from the Salvation Army. He will share some ways you can help out in National Salvation Army Week.
Welcome back. Just about 640 this week, National Salvation Army Week, a chance to celebrate the volunteers and donors who continue to help the group serve our community. Today we're joined by Brad Mayhire, a spokesperson from the organization, and he has more information on how you can help the Salvation Army. Brad, good morning. Hey, good morning, Stephanie. Thanks hey, for having me. Hey, Brad, good to see you this morning. You know, a lot of people know about the Salvation Army, but you guys are so much more than those red kettles at Christmas time or a place to donate old clothing. What all does the Salvation Army do here in San Antonio? Oh, that, and that's the most common thing. Most people know about the Christmas presents and the stores, but uh, we, um, we do a lot of things. There's social services programs where we help people with food and utility, rental assistance. Uh, we have programs for veterans. We have programs for seniors. We have shelters. We have a men's shelter. And then downtown we have a women and family shelter. Is, and we also house single families. So there's so much more there, disaster services. Um, you know, we're a church. Uh, there's a lot of things that people don't know about the Salvation Army and so many ways that their donations help. Uh, they stay local and they help families here in San Antonio. And speaking of that, Brad, I know it's been a tough year for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. How much did the pandemic affect donations? Um, yeah, it, in, in a lot of ways it did. I mean, I guess overall, you know, it, it, it did hurt some, but those who were able to give saw the need and gave more. But there's but there was quite a bit of work to be done. You know, there were a lot of fundraisers, a lot of events that we didn't get to do in the past year. And then there were programs that we had to temporarily shut down. And then there were some ways where we stepped up and we did more. You know, we did more food distributions, uh, drive through food distributions. So we, we weren't able to serve as many in some ways, but in other ways we were able to serve more. Well, as always, Brad, you guys have stepped up when times are tough, and it's it's been a tough year for sure. Uh, help us help you, Brad. How can we get our viewers more involved in, in what you guys do on a daily, weekly, and, and yearly basis? Well, um, you know, we, there's a lot of ways people can help year-round. You know, they can volunteer their time, uh, or they can donate financially, and they can donate any time of year at Salvation Army SATX org, uh, and that you know that's year round. Um, we welcome them to just come in for a tour and see what we're all about. And then this week with National Salvation Army Week, um, you know we're not getting to have an annual luncheon this year. Uh, it's usually our second biggest fundraiser of the year behind the Red Kettle. So this week with National Salvation Army Week, they can tune into KSAT twelve and they can stories, learn about our programs, and then tomorrow we have a big telethon coming up that's airing from 7 to 7, uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and uh, our overall goal is uh, to make to, to raise $250,000 this week, and we need the community's help to get there. And Brad, let's kind of put a, a face on the people that you guys help. Uh, I know you, you've helped a lot of families, and we've been highlighting some of those families this past week. Tell us an example that you can think of at the top of your head uh, of a family who's been getting some help from the Salvation Army. Uh, there, there's quite a few. You know, Recently, uh, we had a family get to tell their story uh, here on KSED. It was a family that moved here from California, and they were just looking for a new start. You know, they, were, they overcame some major struggles. And uh, through the help of the Salvation Army, they were able to get, you know, food, clothing and shelter, you know, for their children. And they made a commitment to get over the hump and the, the father's working. They're saving up money for a for a new home. Uh, they're on track to do really well. And that's just one example of numerous that we see every day. Well, Brad Mayhar from Salvation Army, thanks for joining us live here on GMSA. We appreciate everything you guys do in and around the San Antonio area. It makes us a special place to live. Yes, it does. Thank you, Brad. Yeah. Thank you, Brad. We're going to have more, of course, on uh, Salvation Army Week and how you can get involved coming up. And again, SalvationArmySATX.org. For now, let's go ahead and check on traffic with Samuel King. Yeah, a few incidents here and there. Uh, Stephanie and Mark will start with some travel times here. 28 minutes coming in from the Pleasanton area in 37 and 17 minutes 
coming in on I-35 from Lytle. And speaking of 37 and 35, we do have a disabled vehicle there, right there at uh, 37 at 35. This is the view from Jones. You can see one of the uh, Tech Hero uh, vehicles there helping out. Traffic still flowing well in that area, but that's something to watch out for, kind of in a tricky uh, spot here. Also, a few delays on 35 heading away from downtown. Also, still have this crash and double icons there, Broadway at uh, CG Lane, just north of uh, 410 there, just east of the airport. We've been talking all week about gas prices are up two cents on average from yesterday across the board in Bear County, Texas, and across uh, the country. Texas gas supplies are fine. Just have to worry about uh, people going out with demand. We have more people are out and about, and plus people are a little bit worried. But again, we're assured here in Texas that our supplies are fine. But just something to budget for uh, this week, and especially when we get to the weekend. Definitely. Uh, thank you, Samuel. Mike would say this is probably a good problem. Our ring gauges haven't had much time to dry out lately. No, and you know, picked up on average two, some areas three inches of rain. This rain gauge in Atascosa County was uh, just about uh, a little more than an inch and a half right there. That's the, the metric scale on, on that side. But uh, yeah, a good uh, another inch and a half. And this is on top of all the rain that we had a couple of days ago in some areas and then obviously a, a couple of weeks ago. And there is more on the way. And you saw that, uh, yeah, a lot of I don't know if that's a pond or just standing water in the background there on the lawn, but there are a lot of lawns where it was just kind of standing water out there. Plenty of clouds hanging around here. The road appears to be uh, drying out pretty good from all the, the traffic there. Uh, 62 here in town, 50s Hill Country, 56 Lost Maples, one of the cooler spots and humidity dew points. Everybody's down below uh, 60, so it's very comfortable out there. Now with all the moisture in the ground and relative to the temperature, these numbers are high. What's helping us out, though, is the fact that we do have a good breeze out there and more on that. But that's because otherwise we would be seeing some uh, fog around. Now, as far as dew points, they've dropped down about four or five degrees compared to this time yesterday and quite a bit. Remember, we had all that humidity, especially left over down to the south and southeast yesterday, but that has also dried out considerably. Wind is about 10, 15 miles per hour. Got some pretty good gusts on top of that. 25 at the airport, 22 at Port S.A. And like I said it will stay breezy throughout the rest of today. And, you know, it's going to stay like this for the next couple of days. The humidity dew point temperatures won't be really going up all that much. They'll stay fairly steady, fairly comfortable through tomorrow and through Friday. But then once we get into the weekend, uh, things are definitely going to be changing around here. We do have I, I'm just going to call it cloudy skies today. There may be a peak or two of sunshine out there. I kind of doubt that, though. A little bit more in the way of uh, some sunshine then as we go into Friday. And then Friday night, here comes the rain again going into the weekend. And uh, I don't think it's going to be a complete washout over the weekend, but we will have a fair amount of rain Saturday, Sunday, and then going into the first part of next week. 66 degrees today at noon, cloudy skies and high temperature today, 68. Now the record for the lowest high temperature is 65. Don't think that's in jeopardy, but we're close to that. Normal high temperatures, 85 degrees. So yeah, do the math. We are way below normal today. 75 tomorrow, 78 on Friday. Nice, pleasant starts in the low 60s. And then we go into the weekend and we will have some showers around here, even a couple of thunderstorms. Temperatures will slowly go back up uh, to about normal average readings by the first part of next week and even more rain chances going into next week. And then some of the long range models, which you take with a grain of salt, but way down the road toward the end of next week, more rain. Changes. More rain. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I feel, I feel like we're cheating. <laughs> I, I know. For mayor. <laughs> Hopefully it gets put in the bank, though, which would be nice. So no complaints about the rain, though. One of our viewers, Jackie Stewart Freeman, wrote on my Facebook page, Burr. Good morning. Yes. <laughs> this morning it is Burr for some folks. It, Justin Horn is. is saying that too, I bet. Yeah, probably so. 648 on your Wednesday. And the coronavirus pandemic forcing a lot of people to stay indoors. But tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to meet a couple of runners from Holotus who are covering a lot of ground as part of a challenge. That's tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go. And another look at traffic coming up with Samuel King. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest fallout from the pipeline shutdown. Gas prices rising, many stations now running dry, and people lining up to fill up. Four states have declared a state of emergency as the company is meeting to decide when it will restart that pipeline. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. There we go. 
An overnight standoff continues this morning here on the city south side. Take a look right over here. This is happening off Atta Street and South New Braunfels Avenue east of I-37. Now we have heard negotiators talking to an armed man asking him to drop his gun. We've also heard what sounds like family members or loved ones pleading with that man to cooperate. Now all of this started just before 11 last night. Customers at an HEB had actually told police that that man was walking around the parking lot with a gun and threatening to shoot himself. Now a sergeant on the scene does tell us this all happened again just before 11 last night, but efforts to get that man to lower his weapon have continued well into this morning. SAPD and SWAT have negotiated with him for several hours. Now the scene looks like it's dwindling down, but of course we will continue to stay out here to bring you the latest information on this developing story. Thankfully, we have not heard of any injuries that are reported, but again, we will continue to stay on top of this story throughout the morning. Reporting live on the city south side, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Panic at the pump. No, it's out. After a ransomware attack shut down the Colonial Pipeline Friday, which is still mostly offline. The 5,500 mile pipeline supplies about 45% of all fuel used on the East Coast, where nervous drivers have been lining up and filling up. Station after station is running out. We don't have no more. AAA says the price of a gallon of gas has shot up more than seven cents in the last week. Certainly, demand is up, but what about supply? It's not that we have a gasoline shortage, it's that we have this supply crunch. Meaning the fear of running out of fuel is fueling supply issues. Let me emphasize that much as there um, was no cause for, say, hoarding toilet paper at the beginning of the pandemic, there should be no cause for hoarding gasoline. This will probably be all cleared up uh, in a few days, maybe by the end of the week, if we're lucky. Uh, the U.S. has a fairly large supply of gasoline in reserve. By the end of today, Colonial Pipeline could make a decision about a full restart. But just in case it's delayed, a number of states and the EPA have taken emergency steps to ease supply concerns. In the meantime, officials are asking for patience before pumping. It will take a few days to ramp up operations. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Let's go ahead and check back with Samuel King. I know there was that problem off of I-37. Yeah, we'll get to that in just a moment, uh, Stephanie and Mark. But first, looking at our some travel times here, 24 minutes coming in uh, from Bernie to downtown San Antonio, 28 minutes uh, from Boulevard and 281, and 26 minutes on New from New Braunfels on 35. So those all look fairly good at this moment. Once you get downtown, you might run into this uh, a disabled vehicle, the TxDOT Hero truck there helping out here on the ramp uh, from 37 to 35 uh, northbound. So just something to uh, look out for in uh, that area. But they do are seeing a little bit of a slowdown there on 35. So just watch out uh, for that there downtown at the Y. So we'll have this crash on the board on uh, Broadway, uh, just north of Loop 410, just east of the airport. And also, Mike, some delays starting to build a little bit on 1604 eastbound. Plenty of clouds. Boy, it feels really nice when you step outside this morning. Uh, it doesn't look too pretty. We've got temperatures in the low 60s and even some upper 50s parts of the hill country and a pretty decent breeze out there. We do have, actually have some wind gusts, 23 at Stinson, 21 at the airport and 24 miles per hour is the gust in Hondo and it's going to stay breezy throughout the day. So jacket's not a bad idea. 66 at noon. That's it. 68 for a high temperature today. Only three away from the record for the lowest high temperature ever. Yeah, I don't think that's in jeopardy, but the next couple of days, pleasant mornings, nice afternoons, mid to upper 70s. Another rain chance moves on in here over the weekend. See, as we're in spring now, I mean, almost in summer, we're trying to plan stuff, and every time we look, there's a new chance of rain, including into next weekend. Yes. Next couple of days, maybe a chance to cut your grass. All right. Okay, we'll be prepared for that. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. We're back for GMSA at 9. See you then.